I think a lot of people get this mixed up. And so I want to spend a little time just talking about how your interest is calculated on our debt tool, right? A lot of people get this mixed up and I've had conversations and comments back and forth with people in the, in the comment sections of, of my videos. I think you guys are getting really hung up sometimes. So I'm gonna do a quick example. Let's say we owe 10,000 on this secured personal line of credit at 10.05%, okay? In one whole year, if all I did was make interest only payments, right? divided by 12, I'm going to pay $83.75 per month, right? 83.75 times 12. I'm going to pay a, a max of interest on 10 grand in a 12 month cycle, 365 days. That's the total amount of interest I'll pay. There's no dispute there. That is how interest works on a personal line of credit, unsecured revolving line of credit, and a home equity line of credit. There's no dispute here. Okay, this is how it works. And then it's and then that interest is charged on the due date. Okay, now sometimes there's some variation with PLOCs and HELOCs. Small little variation in terms of your option when you make a payment. And this is how we manipulate our cost. Right, so. Recap, looking at this specific secured personal revolving line of credit with fifth and third bank, you take the amount that you owe, so I'm in this example here, 10,000 bucks times 10.05% and you divide it by 365, we're paying $2.75 per day for however long I owe ten thousand dollars right which means on Monday right let's say I took out ten grand and didn't pay anything into the line I'm going to be charged two dollars and seventy five cents but it is not getting applied to the ten thousand dollar balance until the due date so that interest is gonna sit off to the side it's not gonna add to my balance at the end of Monday. Won't do that, okay? So on Tuesday, I'll owe 275 again. This is different than credit cards. A credit card, right, for the most part, if I'm understanding this correctly, hey, I might be wrong here, but the, I know this is especially true with cash advances on a credit card. If you do a cash advance on a credit card, right? And you owe 10 grand, say it's the same rate, 10.05%, day one, you're gonna owe $2.75, right? Then what happens is you're going to get charged that 275 at the end of Monday. So it's gonna actually add to your balance. So now you're gonna owe ten thousand two dollars seventy five cents on tuesday and then what they do is they times it by ten oh five percent divided by 365 so now you're gonna owe two dollars and seventy five cents and it it's like more like two dollars seventy six cents i know what the number says but it'll it's gonna creep up a little bit so each day that in a cash advance each day that you leave the balance owed, your interest is being compounded on interest. So it's interest on interest. That is, that is simple interest compounding daily, right? I might have my language. I believe I'm saying it correct here. Now, that same language the, the banks sometimes confuse us because they use the same language. And they'll say that this PLOC is simple interest compounding daily. So they'll say that, right? 
But when you run the math, when you actually have a line of credit, and I can, I can prove this, right, with any one of my clients, and I can show the math, when they take out 10 grand, they're not actually getting charged 275 on Monday, at the end of Monday. It's not going to show when they look in their account. They're not going to see that interest being charged until 25 days later, right, on the due date. So however much interest accrued during that time, they now will owe, say, the, what was it, 275 times 30. So it was around 80 83 bucks, right? So it's 10,005 divided by 12. If I do nothing, right? If I do nothing and owe 10,000 for an entire statement, right? I'm going to owe $83.75. So if I just pay that, I'm still going to I'm just going to owe 10 grand that next month, right? And that'll be that. And then next month I'll owe it again. And the following, the following, the following. But see, if I'm doing velocity banking, I owe 10 grand on Monday. So I pull out 10 and then I immediately throw my income in. I'm no longer going to pay that. I'm going to pay whatever the ending balance is on Monday, which is going to be a lower amount. This is critical. And then each and every day afterwards, that interest that's being charged per day it compounds on the due date. So it'll total it up and then be applied on the due date, not before, right? Now, here's what can happen with, typically you will see this on a personal line of credit. When you go to make that payment, so let's say you owe 10,000 on Monday, and then you dump your income in on Tuesday. Let's say your income was five grand, right? Your balance will go from 10,000 minus 5K, and you'll then see the $2.75 charge. You'll see it. So it'll be 4,900, right? And some change, right? You'll see that. So, so 5,000 minus $2.75. So you'll you'll see five, you'll see four thousand nine nine seven two five go to principal, and then you'll see the interest get deducted, right? That's how some banks have their line of credit function, their personal line of credit function. Some, not all. Now, with a PLOC, you may be given the option to make a principal only payment of the five grand, right? and or principal and interest payment. What I like to do, if given the option, whether it's a home equity line of credit or personal line of credit, anytime I put money in to my line, I want it to go to principal first. If I'm given the option every time, I'm going with principal first. And then on the due date, charge me the interest on the due date. Because what the beautiful thing is, if I apply 10,000 minus 5, I now owe 5K. The interest doesn't show up yet. The interest doesn't get charged till when? The due date, if given the option. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm affecting, I'm manipulating what I actually end up paying on that due date. And that's what velocity banking is all about if you can get that through your brain through and through from one ear to the other you're able to comprehend that this is a game changer not only for eliminating debt but also how you borrow in the future and how you lend and how you evaluate opportunities you're always going to be looking at costs right and if i can manipulate that cost and pay nearly nothing I'm reducing my costs and increasing my rate of return when I borrow to leverage. Phenomenal stuff here.